Jesus of sin, Jesus, of course, being the Word of God, He will remove every burden of sin. Did you know Jesus wants to be your very dearest and sweetest friend? Go ahead now and open your heart tonight and let his word in. Oh, take, take his hand, take his name. God has, oh, and Jesus will show you the way, mm -hmm. oh, he may not pass your way ever again, that's why you must open your heart tonight and let him thank God I want to read you a passage tonight and I know you that know anything know anything about God at all knows that the most important thing to him is that his word is presented and then the next most important thing of course is the salvation of your soul after that you can put it in any priority you want to your aches and your pains are important to him but not so much as the salvation of your soul which comes through the preaching of the word. Hallelujah. How can they call on him whom they've not heard? How can they hear him whom they've not believed upon? How can they hear or believe without a preacher? How can he preach except to be sent? As it is written, how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. So tonight, make sure your feet are beautiful and get ready to pass this message on tomorrow. Matthew chapter 22 and in verse 1, Matthew, the first gospel in the New Testament, chapter 22 and verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come on to the marriage. But they made light of it, went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard whereof, thereof, he was wroth, then he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And the king came in to see the guests. He saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Repeat the last short verse together with me. For many are called, but few are chosen. One more time, because I know, though you've heard it all your life, you still don't understand what that verse means. For many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, I thank you tonight that we are called of thee. and I thank you above all that we've been chosen by thee. And give us total victory tonight. Let the word of God find a lodging place in every heart. And let answers arrive by the moment. And we know they're coming now. Now, get ready. For thou art ready, we're sure, to confirm your word after it's been delivered. For you do not confirm Time Life Newsweek magazine, but your word, and we want to hear it. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Tonight we're speaking on the subject of the second call, the second chance, and the second class. 
Hallelujah. Some of them, don't look at me. I'm no second fiddler. Well, you don't know. You might be second class tonight. Say, I'm first class A number one. That's what most preachers have been telling me. Well, we'll find out by the time the preaching's over. If you are first class, or maybe you are in that other group that was called last. Hallelujah. I would rather be last than to never make heaven. Most folks want to be first, but Jesus said something about the first being last. And he also said that the head would be the tail. He also said the last would be first, and the tail would become the head eventually. And it seems like the first condition I found myself in wasn't quite good enough to satisfy. For I was born once and didn't ask to be born, but I sure did have to ask to get born that second time. Hello. Now, you notice the preacher has been his ear a few times tonight. If you're wondering why, he's listening for a response. Amen. Oh, me or oh, my. One of them will pitch you. The microphone is portable. We can come down and pick out the quiet spot and preach. It has no cord on the microphone, which means that it's quite accessible and portable, and uh, nobody in the tent can escape us tonight. Isn't that a happy thought? Hallelujah to God. Yes, be better never to be born than never to be born again. Born once, you die twice. Do you believe the second death is a lake of fire? Is that what the scripture says? But if you're born twice, you may not have to die once because Jesus is on his way. Hallelujah. And so tonight, uh, I sure had to ask to get born the second time, and I, I'm in a different shape than I was to start with, and I think that's a, a different and a second category tonight. But now, this parable, and without a parable spake he not to any of his disciples, and do you believe you're God's disciple? A follower of Christ, that means disciple. Christian means Christ-like. The word church means the called out one you get called out tonight, count it a big fat compliment. You might belong to the church after all. So don't get nervous if you're going to be called out. Hello? Ah, listen. So here is a parable that he speaks to his disciples. Now whenever Jesus said there was a certain, you can bet your boots there was a certain. Some say, well, you know, the rich man Lazarus was just a story. No, Jesus said there was a certain rich man. And there was a certain Lazarus. And there is a certain lake of fire and a certain hell. Hallelujah. So with everything that God ever did, it was certain, steadfast and sure. That's why Joseph spoke to the butler and the baker, and saying the reason you've dreamed it twice, and to Pharaoh, the reason you have dreamed it twice, Pharaoh, concerning the cows and the corn, is because the dream is certain, and it shall surely soon come to pass. So whenever you have a double confirmation, it means it's absolutely certain and it's going to happen soon. That's w what that means in Scripture, if you understand and interpret Scripture properly. Now he's speaking about this parable concerning the rich man's uh, son's wedding. And uh, aren't you glad you're going to a wedding? Uh, how many are going to a married supper table of the Lamb that's going to make the $100 plate Democratic and Republican campaign dinners look like a hot dog roast? Hallelujah. Well, I'm waiting to go because, well, the bride is she who is the church who shall be married to the bridegroom who is Christ. Is that true? I love him tonight. Now, I know that there are a lot of different characters at every wedding. I was to many weddings. and I've seen a lot of things happen at weddings. I've seen a lot of people there. I've seen the in-laws and the outlaws. I've seen the photographer and the registrar. I have seen the best man and the ladies in waiting. Amen. I've seen friends of the bride there and some people sitting there just gawking, trying to make sure it was really happening. Taking a record of it so they'll know it's on record. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people were just skeptics and non-believers couldn't believe it was happening, but they showed up. So you see, at every wedding, there's a lot of characters there, but thank God the bride was there too. Are you hearing me? Oh, don't you want to be the bride and be at the wedding and be part of him? 
Paul says, I am jealous over you for godly jealousy. I've espoused you unto one husband, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now, this is why I would do anything I could to help bring your mind into captivity and thoughts into captivity to Christ and his word tonight. This is why I would be against interference and you're letting your mind wandering in, chewing gum, wiggling, writing notes, and thinking about what you're going to eat at McDonald's after church. Because God has something special for you, and I'm jealous over you for godly jealousy, Paul said. I want you to get this thing. Amen. Oh, if you're going to spend the time doing it, don't waste your time. Take advantage, full advantage of every moment of it. So it's a wedding that's going on, and it's the marriage of the king's son. Well, thank God we're going to it. Now, in the marriage of the king's son, the, uh, the king says, I've got my fatlings ready, my oxen are ready, the feast is ready. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people to come and die. So he has asked you to come and partake tonight of the signs and the wonders and the miracles, to partake of healing and victory and edification and building up in the most holy faith. He's come and asked you to enjoy this open-air meeting. The weather is nice and warm, and a lot of parts of the country tonight are freezing to death. Got the heaters on, the stove's running in the church. And here you are with the opportunity, God making every special bonus and blessing possible for you to come here and receive what he has spread for you. Now, of course, when easy come, easy go shows up, some people do not see the force except for the trees. Some do not, are not able to count their blessings immediately, for they never miss water till the well runs dry. When they get parched and the tongue hangs up, they've got troubles on every hand, then they remember the good old days. Remember how good God used to be to them. Right now, God's being real good to you in the present, in the now, at the moment. Let us recognize it. Say Amen. So now the table is spread and the, the Lord says, go and invite the people that I've called and sent engraved invitations to. But they took it lightly. And there's a lot of folks that take meetings like this lightly. Oh, that don't mean anything. Oh, oh, why, if Brother Freddie was a real man of God, he'd be in a fancy cathedral somewhere known in himself. Mm -hmm. But I can't drag a cathedral with me of words ago. I have to take what will portably move. Say amen. They took it lightly. <clears throat> they went to their merchandise. And so many people are so involved with materialism, it's not funny. Secular, humanistic, uh, materialistic things. As though the kingdom of heaven was meat and drink. You'd think the kingdom of heaven was meat and drink if you took one trip down Highway 1. Hello. Wall-to-wall -wall restaurants. Their God is their belly, the scripture said in the last day. But it's not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is righteousness and joy and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the real kingdom of God is all about. And in the kingdom tonight, there's many things available. Oh, get some kingdom keys working for you. The keys to the kingdom that Jesus gave Peter. and Unlock the door. Every key unlocks some door. Get a hold of the right key and your door will be unlocked tonight. Oh, to your dilemma or you can lock it in the devil's face, how, whichever the case may be. Now, they took it lightly. They went to their merchandise. One went to his farm. One fellow said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and business cares choked him out. I bought a parcel of ground. Earthly cares choked him out. I married a wife. Family cares choked him out. Hello. Oh, got to go on a honeymoon. Well, honey, let's go past the moon the stars, and every other planet. Are you headed that way? Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. So they took it lightly, and they treated the servants that invited them despitefully. Mm, murdered them and stomped them and did everything they could. You know, you don't have to pull a trigger. All you can do is run your mouth. It's called character assassination. Say amen. All right. Now, of course, this was the first call and the first bunch in the first church. And the first one who had the invitation to come, and they muffed it, and they dropped the ball, and they used up grace period, and done despite unto the spirit of grace, and uh, now they reached the point of no return, and God washed his hands and said, I'll have nothing to do with him. Would you say, they said, well, one went here, one, 
Never mind them, said the Lord. Go out and get a second bunch. Mm -hmm. Issue for the second call. Aren't you glad you got a second call one day? Why, my goodness, if you hadn't got a second call and a second and a second and a second and a second, probably a, a 1,002, you'd have never got to the altar, would you? You would have never made it to this point. God is merciful. He don't just call once. Hey, unless you just totally destroy it and uh, kill the unction and the, the leading and the uh, conviction and the tugging and the drawing power of his spirit. That's the same as sinning against the spirit. And if you do that, of course, you're beyond the reach of the spirit. Hello. So now, a second call has gone out. I'd like to have a second touch tonight. What about you? I'd like God to do the thing twice. Again, second means once more. And last night's blessing is not enough for me tonight. I need one tonight. Oh, my horn hast thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You like fresh oil? I don't know one of you cooks that would ever put stale oil in the cake. Right? Oh, your husband would have something to say. None of you mechanics put stale oil in the crankcase. When your wife broke down downtown, she'd have something to say. Say <laughs> amen. It's fresh oil or nothing. And I'm looking for a fresh touch of God's spirit on my soul here tonight. I'm thanking God for a second call. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be God. The first time I saw old Elijah, he was running from old Jesse. There was a lot of them Bell sisters, but Jesse was the worst. He got underneath the juniper train and said, Lord, come and take my life. And God said, I'm not going to take your life. You haven't finished your job yet. I'm not going to come and take a chariot and carry you to heaven in a chariot yet. I've got things yet for you to do. And when you get them done, then I'll come get you. Not until. Now, do you know why you're still sitting here? God ain't through with you yet. He had to go to the mountain and learn the voice of God. He had to learn who to pray for and anoint for king over different countries. And he had to... Uh, Anoint a successor to follow up on him. When he left, he had to leave Elisha behind. So until you learn the voice of God and learn how to pray and who to pray for and what to say and leave something behind you for a succession and for a legacy, a mantle and an inheritance, you're not going no place. I said, now everybody talking about heaven is going there yet. They've got things to do before they go. Is that right? So he's underneath the juniper tree and he goes to sleep. Of course, not everybody nodding at you is agreeing with you. God sends an angel and touches him. Whoop! He jumps up, eats a miracle cake and a miracle uh, cruise of water out in the middle of the desert. Here it shows up and he eats it and he drinks it and he feels so good and he goes back and sits underneath the same old juniper tree again. Naturally, he's going to go back to the same old slumber again, sitting in the same old rut again. Rocking in the same old rocking chair by the fireplace with the television running while the tent meeting's going on again. Say amen. Are you hearing me? So God is so merciful that he sends a second touch and the angel comes the second time and hits him, wakes him up, said, get up out of that rut, boy, because any time you go back to what you, you was doing before I, God touches you, you're going to be right back in the old rut again. You've got to make expansion. You've got to grow and develop and mature. Move. Don't sit underneath the same juniper tree again. Hello. I mean, I don't want to catch you folks doing the same thing you did today after tonight's service. Hallelujah. So the angel touches him the second time. He eats another miracle cake and another miracle cruise of water. And he goes on the strength of that meat and drink 40 days and 40 nights on the Horeb, the Mount of God. Now his successor, Elisha, promises this widow woman, uh, the, not the widow woman, but the great woman of Shema. She was not great because she was overweight, but great in faith. Hallelujah. He promises her that she's going to have the son. And she has the son, and the son dies when he's old enough to go to the fields and work. And said on his, uh, he, well, he ran home. His daddy sent him home. It's always mama's boy when there's something wrong with him. Hmm? Daddy sends him to mom and tells him that it's mama's boy now when there's something wrong with the boy. Isn't that right? So he sends the boy home to the, from the field and he sits on his mama's lap till noontime and he dies. 
So she goes and finds the prophet up on the top of Mount Carmel, and he comes in to the house and touches the boy once, and the flesh of the child waxes warm. That's what the second touch of God's Spirit will do for you tonight. It'll warm up your flesh. Or I should say the first flesh. The first touch will warm up your flesh. But it was the second touch that did more than warm the flesh. It raised him from the dead. Let me repeat that again. He touched him once and the flesh of the child waxed warm, but there was no spirit in his body. Some of you folks are warming up to this revival meeting already, but you need some spirit in your body. Hallelujah. Yeah. It took the second touch. When he stretched himself out upon the boy the second time, he sneezed seven times. His spirit came back to his body. He stood up and Elisha gave the boy back to his mother. So aren't you glad for the second call? Hmm. The first batch of folks weren't worthy, but if you're here tonight, you're worthy. You must be interested or you wouldn't have showed up. There's nothing we can say about those folks that's not here to hear it. And so there's no sense of uh, talking about them to you because you're the folks that's here. You're the second bunch of fiddlers. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I love him, don't you? All right. Jesus is praying for this blind man. He can't pray for him in town because there's so much unbelief in the town. You know any towns like that? Well, he carries him out to the city limits. And the city limits is there. He says, come here. We've got to get outside of town. There was a definite perimeter that he had to take him outside of. Did you know that the Satan's kingdom is so highly regimented and organized that every principality and every spiritual wickedness in high places and the rulers of the darkness of this world and each power, demonically, has a perimeter, and they have an area that they control. And it just happened to be that in Bethsaida, it was one of unbelief. Isn't that right? Unbelief ruled the city of Bethsaida. Jesus had to take the man out of town to pray for his blind eyes. At the city limits, then he could pray for him. And suddenly, his eyes sprang open, but he claimed he saw a man in trees walking. Jesus said, oh boy, you're worse off than you was before. Come here, you need another touch. Hello. Your vision's crooked and distorted and topsy turvy backwards and upside down. Like a lot of folks' vision, a lot of church members' vision that's only got one touch. Mm -hmm. They know how to run everything, and the way they see it, it ought to be this way, and the way they see it should be some other way. And They don't even see straight yet until they have a second touch. They get another touch on them, then they'll start seeing right. Say amen. I think it's time for another second call tonight and a second touch from God here tonight. God moving for you again. That's what the second means. Moving on your behalf once more. Hallelujah. Oh, the double, the double portion. That once again blessing. Hallelujah to God. Yes, he'd been living in a town of unbelief so, so long that even when he got healed, he couldn't hardly get healed right. Hmm? He didn't. He saw men as trees walking in. Some of you folks wonder why you don't get perfect miracles right up way. Some of you wonder why. Why does it take so long to get my healing through to me? It's because it's a progressive work because of where you've been living and hanging around. A lot of the atmosphere has been rubbing off on you. That's right. And Jesus touched him once more and his vision cleared up. And every city has got a prince that runs it. That Satan had unbelief. Sodom had homosexuality. Athens, Greece was idolatry. Corinth was uh, carnality in the flesh. Hallelujah. Uh, Philippi was witchcraft. Is that right? Capernaum was pride. Exalted unto heaven, thou shalt be brought down to hell, said Jesus of the city of Capernaum. Every particular city had a prince that ruled it. Would you like to know the name of the devil that runs Fort Pierce? You wouldn't? Well, then I won't tell you. How many would? Well, a few's got enough nerve to hear. All right, the devil that runs Fort Pierce is this one. You go and take an inventory of what everybody in this town does, what their worst besetting sin is in this city, which is uh, uh, in mass or uh, generally speaking, it's the one thing that most people do the most of in this town. When you find out what that sin is, then you have the name of the demon that runs the city. Did you understand that? Right. By their fruits ye shall know them. You don't get preachers off a pear tree. 
I mean, either make the tree corrupt or make it good, Jesus said. You won't get good fruit off a corrupt tree, and you won't get corrupt fruit off of a good tree. Now, you might be the poorest discerner of spirits in the world, but if you're a good fruit inspector, hello, you'll be able to tell what it is because of what it does. Amen? What is in the spirit realm always bleeds over into the physical realm. It will emerge, and you'll be able to read it. Oh, do you love his word tonight? Thank God I'm happy. All right. Glory to God. It was a second call, that was for sure, that Jesus sent out, and now we're here in the tent enjoying the supper. Somebody said, I thought you thought about the marriage supper table of the Lamb. Well, you've got to get practiced up. So go ahead and chomp. Chew. Oh, said John, the little book you gave me to eat, Jesus, was sweet in my mouth. But bitter in my belly. Of course it is. It always sounds good when you hear it preached. But wait till you swallow it and digest it and have to live it the next day. Then's when it really kills your flesh. Say <laughs> amen. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to eat. Because we're practicing up for the Last Supper. Some said they had the Last Supper just before the cross. That was their Last Supper. My Last Supper is going to be my first supper throughout eternity. And it's going to last on and on and on and on, age upon eternity upon aeon. Hallelujah. Some people have had their last supper, but my supper is going to last forevermore. Aren't you glad? Are you feeding tonight? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Paul says, let him that thinks he's spiritual recognize and admit that the things I speak and teach are the truth. Hallelujah. A lot of folks think they're spiritual, but you can really tell they are by whether or not they receive the word. Someone said, well, that's the problem with you, Brother Freddie. You don't preach the word. You're not standing behind the pulpit reading it off page by page, note after note. Don't have to. Many years ago, I laid it in my heart that I may not sin against God. It's laid in there, and the Holy Ghost is just tapping that library shelf and pulling out what you need to hear because he knows who you are and what you need is and who is here tonight and knows just what to give you. Isn't that right? So here is the great supper and the second batch has showed up and they are appreciating the supper and notice the second group who they were <laughs> oh, what they were lame in the hall and the blind and the poverty stricken and the people had everything in the world wrong with them poor but rich in faith possessing nothing but inheriting all things uh, consider your calling brethren not many noble were called, not many mighty, not many great men after the flesh, but who have God chose? Look around and see. Look at each other and you'll see who God has chose. Oh, you're going to be looking at these folks for a long time, so you better start liking them. Say amen. Except they'll look better in the new body. Hallelujah. Aren't you looking forward for a new body? I'd like to live forever too, but not in this carcass. I couldn't stand this backache for eternity. I'm going to have to live for eternity. I want a good body to live in, like Jesus had when he came out of the grave. Hallelujah. So it was a second call. Hallelujah. I love him, don't you? Praising the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And there was a second uh, class of people showed up, too. I don't mind being second class, because that only means I'm going to be first class someday. The world thinks I am anyhow, so they'll find out one day I'll be ruling the world. They might be ruling it now, but when you overcome, Jesus said, I will give you power over the nations, and ye shall rule them with a rod of iron, and break them as a potter with a vessel of shivers. Thank God. Praising the Lord. Now, here's a beautiful thing. In the wedding, everybody was administered and... Uh, received and when they came to the door a garment the garment was called the wedding garment it is really the difference between being called of God and being chosen of God how many never really knew the difference between being called and chosen well I'll raise my hand because I, I always used to think hey if you was called why wasn't you chosen well bless God I'm called to God that must mean he chose me not necessarily 
there's a difference between being called and being chosen because he called the first batch and they never showed up. Hallelujah. And when he called the second batch, not all of them qualified mm -hmm. to be chosen to be the bride. You know, to be a bride, you're going to have to be chosen. Hallelujah. That's true why when the King Darius, I believe it was, went throughout the land uh, looking for potential uh, brides, finally he selected Esther. Oh, there was a lot of them showed up for the interviews, but Esther got to be chosen. Isn't that right? Praise the Lord. And so tonight, when the second group came in, they came in both bad and good. So you see, there's a lot of bad and some folks is good and sometimes there's some good and some folks is bad and it's a strange mixture that we have uh, in the church world today. Hmm? Here they all come just flocking in and they're not all good. Some of them are characters. But that's why he's got you here to fit you to a garment that will fit you if you will cooperate in putting it on. Will you put on the wedding garment tonight? What is the wedding garment? His righteousness? Well, it's certainly not our righteousness. We, we have to try and strive to be righteous. But when we've done our best and done everything we can, our righteousness is still filthy rags. So we appropriate Christ's righteousness for ours. No wonder he called himself Jehovah to sicken you to prophet Jeremiah, which means the Lord our righteousness. You've claimed his righteousness, have you? Are you free from sin because of his work? and his blood and his cross. Good. And although you must continue to be holy and righteous, still in the final analysis, he is the one who makes you holy and righteous. You understand that? Also, it's a two-way street, cooperation, workers together with God. Now here they come. Everyone received a wedding garment, but that didn't mean everybody put it on. I think it's time to put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the place. I believe you need to be put on uh, whatever you need to put on tonight, not put on the dog and put on a show, but put on righteousness and peace, be any virtue, be anything of a good report or honest or pure. Think on these things. When you come together, one have a song, one have a psalm, one have a testimony, one have a message of prophecy and kick something in the kitty and contribute and put everything together. Hallelujah. So you're putting on your garment. Now you can put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He brought me into the banqueting table and his banner over me was love. And it's time to get ready for the church. Is she who made herself ready. And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, which is the righteousness of the saints. Whenever you read about fine linen, clean and white, that always speaks of the righteousness of the saints. Amen. Now remember, the saints have got to be righteous. They've got to strive to be righteous and be righteous on their own. But remember, it's he who put the fine linen on them. So that's Christ's righteousness that he's putting on you because you was righteous to start with. See, it's again cooperation. Now when Jesus came back on a white horse in Revelation 19, back to earth again, uh, the armies of heaven were behind him, the Bible said, riding on white horses clothed in fine linen clean and white, which are the righteousness of the saints. So that means there's some saints in heaven returning to earth with Jesus, riding white horses like he is. Because fine linen always speaks of righteousness of the saints. And I'm glad to go to heaven. I'm glad to return to work upon the earth and rule the nations. Somebody says, oh, you mean we're going to be lodged back here again? I want to be working here for the thousand years of the millennial reign. You catch me? I will be commuting, if you please. My home is in heaven, the new Jerusalem, which is suspended. The nations that are saved shall walk in the light of her. My mansion's there. I'll be going home after work. I'll be... Well, what are you looking at? I have no trouble commuting from heaven to earth in a moment. I have a glorified body then. As a matter of fact, that's no small potatoes or big potatoes because I'll have to go far beyond there to the Father's planet some day to carry out some instructions that God sends me on. I'll be back in a moment. Say amen. Is that too much for you to grasp? 
Such is the power of the glorified body. It can do everything your soul can do. The only reason people limit God and are finite in their reasoning is because your carcass and your flesh has drawn you down so low that you can't even think straight. It has hindered you. Bars of bone have imprisoned you. This old leaden dead weight of the flesh stops you from doing anything. Can't even stay awake to listen to preaching. Say amen. Can't concentrate on it. That's the curse of the flesh. You should get out of the flesh and leave that old lump laying on the bed over there, wondering who that ugly guy is. And your soul gets out here in the middle of the room, seeing everything, hearing everything, hollering, yelling. No one can hear you. No one can see you. You and the angel are very, very glad to go and to leave here. You're ready to leave. Hey, let's get out of this place. We can't contact the physical world no more. Let's go to a world where the furniture is compatible to the soul. Hallelujah. Oh, are you listening to me? At that moment, there'll be no more sorrow, sighing, crying, or dying. At that moment, there'll be no more hindrance, no more gravity, no more pain. There'll be no more space. There'll be no more distance. There'll be no more time. You're in the eternal realm now with no hindrances whatsoever, with all your senses. Absolutely a hundred times keener than they was in the deadened, leaded weight of your carcass. What I'm telling you is the soul of man never dies. You can't destroy the soul. Nothing can be destroyed that God ever created. And it just changes from form to form, that's all. Everything that's here came out of the spirit world by the spoken word of God anyhow. Is it little wonder it's going to go back one day into the dust and disintegrate and dissolve? And we will look and say, where did it go? Well, it just went back where it came from. Oh, glory. Since everything came out of the supernatural world anyhow, I think I'll feel at home going back into it. This is why I'm trying to be supernatural tonight. I'm going to spend more time there than I'm ever going to spend down here. You're not going to catch me going into that world, cold turkey. I'm going to be practiced up before I leave. Say amen. amen. You understand me tonight. I hope I'm not speaking Greek to you. It is English, and how many do understand English? Oh, wonderful. Hallelujah to God. Now, the bad and the good are at the marriage. Hmm. How are we going to make the bad good now? By putting on the garment. And I'm almost through here. And God's going to work miracles. And it is 9, 10 for the benefit of all the clock watchers. So it's not late. Hallelujah. Why, well, great-grandmother found out how early we're getting out of church these days. She'd turn over in a grave. It's Saturday night. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's also Saturday night in heaven. Heaven's clock to split second to midnight. And there's one rich man that's just crying for a drop of water. Just let me warn my five brothers. God says, no, they got the word, they got the prophets. They won't listen to them, they won't believe it if one raised from the dead. And that means tonight, if you don't believe what you're hearing preached, you wouldn't believe it if we raised the dead here. You wouldn't believe it. See that? Hallelujah. The bad and the good, they had to put on the garment. Do you want to get your garment on tonight? That's what I'm really getting down to here. Get on the garment, the wedding garment. Glory to God. For the Lord is coming into the banquet now and he's looking everybody over. And he found there a man with a wedding garment. I also gave him ample time to put it on. Don't think God's going to drag you squawking and scratching and kicking and flashing to the altar. You're going to have to put it on yourself. You're going to have to do your part yourself. If it don't fit, then he's, he's willing to take you down a buttonhole lower. Say Amen. If it's not an exact fit and the shoe don't quite fit, he'll just keep on fitting you to fit your garment. Hallelujah. He might draw you up a little bit short, stamp your garter a few times, but you'll fit when he's done working on you. Hallelujah. Now, he sees a man after plenty of time who has not put on his garment, and he calls him friend. Well, you see, God's not against you, and he's not sending you to hell. You put yourself there if you're not ready. Hello. Friend, how'd you come in here and not have on a wedding garment? And the friend was speechless. Do you know that folks that have no wedding garment on have nothing to say? You can listen to them talk for hours and they still haven't said anything. But you show me a man that's got an experience from God, he won't have to talk to me two minutes for I know that he's got the goods. I know he's got something. He is not speechless. He has something to say. And the word of God flows from him. Because of his garment, 
he has something to answer. And a man of no garment is speechless. And the Lord said, bind him, hand him forth, and cast him to outer darkness. So I believe tonight the difference between being called and being chosen is getting prepared, preparing yourself, fitting yourself with a garment, getting the robes of righteousness cleansed and clean. And I'll tell you the best thing I ever did do. I took off the old coat and I put on the new. The old robe was battered, all tattered and torn. The new robe was spotless and never been worn. Tell you the best thing I ever did do, I took off the old coat and put on the new. Got a wedding garment on. Hallelujah. Have you? This old world will never hold me. Any moment I'll be gone. I've made my consecration and I have my wedding garment on. Getting prepared. I'm thankful that you're called. And the gifts and callings of God are about repentance. I mean, you God won't take your gift or call. He'll take you, but he won't take your call or your gift. The graveyards are filled with preachers that should have finished the ministry. He takes people. He don't take calls and he don't take gifts. He'll, he'll take you and get you out of the way so the call and the gift can be free for somebody else to pick up. You understand that? All right. So you've been called, and if you don't repent and do your call, God's not going to repent of calling you. You're the guy that's got to repent and go do what God's called you to do if you expect to make heaven. Am I right? All right then. So if you're called, that's no big deal. The whole world's been called. Are you going to be chosen to be the bride? The difference is the garment. Please get it on and don't be speechless. Don't be bound. Don't be tied up hand and foot because you didn't get yourself ready. Prepare yourself while the Word of God's going forth here tonight because he's sending out a second call. Hallelujah. Oh, he's looking for a second group. Maybe they're second class, who knows, but the last will be first before it's over with. He's ready to give another, a second touch onto you tonight. He's going to do it again. That means he's going to do it the second time. And aren't you glad he's doing it to you now? Thank God. I could preach more, but I have yet many things to say unto you, yet you cannot bear them now. That's what Jesus said. So I'm going to stop right here and pray that God would clothe every one of you tonight, give you a second chance. Second call, second class. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Aren't you glad he called you twice? Aren't you glad to give you another chance, a second chance? Hallelujah. The way some folks has muffed it and messed up their life, it's a good thing God gives you another second chance. And tonight, he knows you can't get all the feathers back in the pillow once the wind has took them. But if you come just as you are without one plea, he'll pick you up at your mess and at your point of difficulty right here. Clean you up, start you all over again and tell you to keep your nose clean. From now on, say amen. It's right. Amen to God. God, as we preached the other night, God does not require of you what you cannot give. So, little widow woman, go get the one pot of oil in your house, and I'll use it, saith God, to fill up all the empty vessels of the neighborhood. She had that, so God used it. What she didn't have, God couldn't use. And what you can't do, God don't require. But what you can do, God requires that. Come just like you are, without one plea. It's just another call. It's another chance. It's another class of people. Thank God. It's not the first ones. The Jews were the ones the gospel was preached to. But blindness came on them so the Gentiles could be grafted in. And all the Gentiles said, Amen. Some of them, well, I'm uh, quite affluent in this society. Oh, you're still second class. You're a Gentile. Say, Amen. You're a wild olive branch been grafted in. If God spared not the natural branches, he's sure not going to spare you if you get heady, high-minded, or up uplifted. That's what Paul preached. Is it good gospel that you've heard tonight? I'm stopping here. We're a second class group, us Gentiles, but we're going to be first one day. The church is his heavenly chosen. It is the Jew that is his earthly chosen. That's the Jew. The church is his heavenly chosen. We might be second class, but we've been called the second time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we've got a second chance. 
Aren't you glad you've got one more chance before Jesus comes? In fact, I feel second touch. I know he's for me tonight. And he will even call me friend if he has to throw me out bound hand and foot. And it's my own fault. Because he passed me a garment and I didn't have the brains to put it on. Say amen. You want to be chosen or you just want to be called? How many wants to be chosen? Called's not good enough. To be chosen, put the garment on that he gives you. Some say, I don't like that preaching. Well, he give it to you tonight. Put it on. Eat it. Receive it. And take it to heart. Hallelujah. And after you put it on, then thank God you're going to be the bride and you're going up in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. Hallelujah. I'm quitting right here. I'm not going to preach another lick. I want every soul in this tent that wants to get fitted perfectly for a wedding garment, rise and get your wedding garment on tonight. It's called preparation. You do not feel totally prepared. You might feel called to God and saved, but you don't feel prepared totally prepared to enter into heaven and be the very bride of Christ I'd say the wedding garment counts stand up and get one put on you tonight hallelujah I'll pray as soon as you stand who needs the prayer some of you are not going to stand and that shows the difference between the bride and the friends of the bride the difference between somebody who wants to be chosen and somebody just satisfied at being called going to show that some folks will we'll come we'll show up to heaven we'll show up to the marriage and I'm not just going to show up to heaven I'm going to show up as a bride you know what's going to get me that I'm putting my garment on tonight my wedding garment hallelujah he's going to come in and say hey how come you didn't put it on I can't say hey, I didn't have one because he gave me one in fact I can't say nothing I'll be speechless and I'll be bound and I'll be cast to outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth that's the scripture tonight Matthew 22 the parable of the king's son's wedding hallelujah I want every other person to get with it and get your wedding garment off by standing you that wants the wedding garment rise I'm praying for your soul to be fitted perfectly with a wedding garment don't sit there and tell me you're perfect and ready to go because I know better. Hallelujah. I give two altar calls every night. This is the first one by invitation. The second one is by ear. I go and get them by the ear so God will get you one way or the other so I'd stand up voluntarily if I was you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up over your head while we pray. Lord Jesus, tonight I'm praying a prayer for every soul in this tent who stood and in their standing they conceded and admitted they needed to be fitted a little more perfectly with a garment that's called a wedding garment. Oh, give them preparation. Let them prepare to meet their God. Let them prepare to make heaven. Prepare not to just show up to the marriage, but to be the bride. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Many called folks have come, even the bad and the good, but it's the wedding garment people that's got something to say. That will be joined unto him and married to him that day. Oh, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, and thy maker is thy husband. Oh, Lord, make me worthy and qualified tonight and fit me with a wedding garment now, and I praise you. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. This is just the first prayer. There are many prayers after this that's going to be prayed. And if you've never seen a miracle, just sit back and get ready because God's going to work a miracle tonight. I wouldn't walk out before a miracle was about to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Go ahead and rejoice. The greatest miracle is the wedding garment that's fitting you. Nothing else ever happened here tonight. This is happening to you. You're getting prepared to meet not only your maker, but your bridegroom, how many can hardly wait till your wedding day? The church shall be married to Christ. Right now, she's espoused. That's why Paul said, I'm jealous over you for godly jealousy. I've espoused you to one husband. We're not married to him yet. We're just espoused. We're in the in-between intermediate state between earth and heaven, between being in the world and not being in heaven yet either. The only limbo and purgatory I know is the church. We're in a caught in the middle, betwixt and between, a jumping off station, a landing station, an intermediate state. All were a different category. It's the world, the church, and heaven in that order. Say amen. Aren't you glad? 
you believe you have your wedding garment on now? I mean, believe you do. Rejoice and thank God for it now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh, glory be to God. I love him because he first loved me. Thank my God. Purchased my salvation on Calvary's tree. If you're satisfied that God heard your prayer and answered it, if you're satisfied you got a wedding garment on, then you may be seated. And if you're not satisfied, get satisfied. Don't quit praying or get through praying until you pray through. Squirm a couple of times and kind of stretch and see if the garment fits you. Mm -hmm. Does what this message gave you tonight, does it fit you? How many feels like it's a possible tight, tight fit? Nonetheless, you must admit it fits you. Say <laughs> praise the Lord. Oh, thank God I love him. We're going on now and pray the prayer of faith. And if you're scared, I'd sneak home too if I was you. But I'm going down to obey God. That's my whole life consists of obedience to God. And that's what I'm going to do next. Of course, immediately somebody started praying, Oh God, oh God, don't let him pray for me. Don't let him pray for me. And don't worry, honey, God will answer your prayers. But if you do have a need and you want him to meet it, he'll do it because your spirit is opening up and your heart is crying and praying for it. This sister, Stan, I'm going to pray for you first tonight. Rise to your feet. You don't mind me praying for your healing? No. That's wonderful. I'm going to enjoy praying for you. Now, we could have done this at the beginning, but of course we weren't ready for it at the beginning of the meeting. Now we're getting ready for it. The word of God's been preached, and now it can be confirmed. Amen. Look at me, Manny Grammy. First, your eyes are weak, losing their vision. Yes. God's going to heal your eyes tonight. She has another, at least a half a dozen other things needs to be healed. And of course, I only get what I pray for. If I don't pray for it, I won't get it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. I could have prayed for everybody at 730. And you'd have been healed, but probably for two or three weeks. Hello. Is that what you want? To be healed for two or three weeks? To be healed forever, permanently. Well, then you have to listen to the Word of God. It's God's Word is confirming, not Jack Benny's jokes and the Encyclopedia Britannica. Now, Grammy, listen. God's going to heal your eyes, and you also have some trouble in your blood. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It sure is. There are two things that bothers your blood, and the first is a fluctuation in your blood pressure. Amen. The second thing is the sugar balance in your blood. This is going to be balanced. This sugar imbalance has caused much of the blindness that is attacking your eyes. Everyone said amen. Now thirdly, God's touching you right there where you suffer. The pain is leaving you now and you need surgery and you're getting it in church tonight. There is one Two, three, four, really, because sugar and the blood pressure are two different things, but it's in the blood. Her eyes, and where she needs the surgery. There's four things. Now, do you want me to stop there or pray for everything you need? I want to be made whole. In other words, you won't let me stop? No. Well, I was going to quit, but she won't let me. Well, it looks like I must continue to pray specifically to receive specifically. You have not because you ask not. You're also weak in your ankle bones. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Amen. Now, how do I know these things about you? The good Lord told you. That's certainly the truth because you never told me, did you? No, sir. You never met before? No, sir. You didn't talk before church? No, sir. I'll be around here talked and sent messages and wrote notes. And no, sir. I didn't pay you enough to come in here and do this? No, sir. It must be God, all I know. Make no two ways about it, friends. There are gifts of God, genuine gifts of God, still on earth today, regardless of what you've been through with whosoever and so-and-so. Hallelujah. Oh, thank God. Now my sister, again, in your lower back, right here Amen. and there. Is Amen. it true? Amen. 
two things again. You strained your back, lifting and working. Amen. And when you did, you also strained both your kidneys. Amen. Amen. God's given you two new kidneys, straight over the counter from Heaven's Parts House. Here they come now. By osmosis, they shall be absorbed into her body. And don't tell me the Creator cannot recreate any time He pleases. Hallelujah. Oh, shut up, my heart. Thank God. Now, Grammy, lastly, the pressure that hits you right there is over your heart. Mm-hmm. It pains once in a while. It's gone. Your eyes are healed. <laughs> Blood pressure down. Sugar balance, balanced. Jesus' name. Surgery on it. Everyone said surgery success. Two new ankle bones above both feet. Blessed be God. Hallelujah to God. Well, when she gets back to earth, we'll find out what all did happen. Boy, rise, God will touch you. Bless you. Take a step of faith. You believe God can heal you too? Yes. Raise your hands up to the Lord. Look upon me now. There comes to you, first of all, a little irritation in your eyes. In one eye, particularly your right eye. Starts in the corner of your eye. Just like a little spot, a little rock starting to grow. That's going to clean out tonight. Do you believe it? Yes. All right. And I want to see it stop here before it turns into a cataract. In old age, you'd be surprised what things like this can turn into. Yeah. Keep your hands up. Secondly, your nerves are going to be healed. Tonight, you'll have a whole new set. Don't that make you feel good? Yeah. Now, shall I just stop with the eye and the nerves? Shall I pray for every need you got? Well, I have a lot of other needs. Otherwise, I can't stop. Don't stop now. Oh, then I won't. I point this out and make special pains to point it out because it's not a bunch of guesswork and saying a bunch of things, one or two has to be right. You see, it's all got to be right or God won't do none of it. It's not the spirit of error, it's the spirit of truth that he'll not stamp his approval upon a lie. Hallelujah. And again, you must pray for what you want or you're not going to get it. You're... The first thing I noticed about your sister was that your blood is low. Your blood is low in its content, which causes you. Well, listen, God's working on you now. This blood is down. It's getting borderline anemic. God's building it up again. This has left you weak and tired and a loss of strength all the time. Right. That's the third thing. You have a little dry tickle here. It feels like a hair or a string. I had a tumor there. Yeah. It's coming out. Hold still. We'll get it. It feels like a big, heavy string, almost as big as a small room. It's gone. Swallow and check it. Feels fine. Keep your hands up. You two are weakened in your spine, in your lower spine and back. God is loosening your back now. You're going to feel, seem like to be oiled and lubricated. Even now. Hallelujah. Someone said amen. One more surgery you're receiving right there. God's doing this one for you. Opening up the digestive flow. Hmm? Amen. I need it. Now this one's saving you several thousand dollars. That's pretty good savings. Surgery success, and everybody say it is a success. Hallelujah to God. Oh, it's already healed. God touched the eye right now. Both eyes, the right one, particularly, it's done. Oh, God, raise up her blood with a blood transfusion now, and now it is done. And everyone said, now it is done. Oh, repeat to God. Nerves, peace, be still. 
I only miss this tension at the back of your neck. That's all. Gone. Check it. Thank you. There you go. Thank the Lord. God undid and redid this surgery. Give you a new surgery here. Healed these other matters for you too. Isn't that wonderful? Stand God to touch you. Look upon me. You believe God to heal you too? Yes. Let's see. Sinus is clear and open. Did they? Yes. Good. Keep your hands up a little more. You get a little sore spot at times right in here. Collarbone. Yes. Pinch nerve. Check it. See if it left. Did it? Yes. Again, you've had like a dry tickle go down your throat, clear down your bronchial tubes, and fill you up with some kind of a mucus here, like a virus mucus. Mm -hmm. It's coming out now. Hallelujah to God. I suppose you'd like your blood up too, about three points. It's too low, huh? Yes. You, did you tell me all these things about you? No. How in the world do I know them? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's the Lord told you. <laughs> Well, it's dawning on our sister where the source of information is coming from. Hallelujah. Praise God. Keep your hands up and be ready. Forward to God. When you work hard, stooping, bending, and lifting, right there, something moves out in your back. Pulls out the muscle there. Yeah. It won't do it no more. Loose your heel and you're free. Brush it, be God, it's down. Everyone said it is down. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. This sister stand, God's touching her next. Amen to God. God bless you. You believe you will? Amen. Raise your hand. You two have a little fullness in here. Going to clear it out. This has to do with a gland in your throat. The gland is a thyroid. Thyroid gland. And you don't know this except it will mess up your schedule and your system. It's a powerful gland. And if it's not just right, your system can be out of whack and off schedule. And that being the truth, along with the, what feels like a little knot or a little lump in there as you swallow, that dissolving will be proof enough to me that it's healed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You've had a light, just a light dizziness in your head that comes. That's going to leave you too. Sometimes there's a pain comes up over the fore part of your head here. Comes over one eye, the right eye, and the right fore part of your head. It's quitting now. Shall I pray for it all? Your trouble right through here and your digestion. There's a little blockage that has come to it. It's caught in the colon, the large colon, size of a very small plum or a grape. It's disintegrating and perishing. You're opening up again. You're going to flow on a regular basis. Hallelujah. Someone said amen. Glory be to God. And again, in your lower spine between your hip joints here, something draws and has a little awkward sensation to it. You need a mild adjustment. God's going to adjust the bones here for you. Thank God. The last matter I must pray for is not physical, but it is mental. There's a depression been hanging over your mind, just trying to run you crazy. Me. This depression has its domestic, domestic home and family. And it's like related among the kin. God is going to alleviate your mind tonight. You can't solve the thing anyway. You can't help yourself or them. It's in his hand he'll have to solve it, which he will do in his own time and so on. Oh, glory. I was going to pray just then. Something caught me right here in my chest. Look, sister. I don't know what it means, but in the best bone in your heart, God is going to heal it. That's all I can tell you. Glory to God. Jesus' name is done. Leave this depression from her mind tonight. Now, God, I pray it's done. It's gone. Open up the block, five, thirty. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. She'll walk and the lower spine will be right when she walks. Hallelujah. The pressure of the right forepart of her head is lifted. Thyroid has received a shot of iodine. It's done. Hallelujah. Well, thank God it's done. Sister Stan, God's ready to heal you. So you believe you'll be healed? I know I will be. You have fluid in your body that torments you? Yes, I do. How many fluid pills have you taken? I refuse to take any unless God heals me. What? Um, I have refused to take any. I'm letting God take care of me. <laughs> but they sure wanted you to take them, did they? Mm-hmm. Raise your hand. Seven in one day. Took seven in one day. That's what I was trying to zero in on. Seven years ago. Well, we won't hold that against you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. Now tonight, we're going to pray, and God's going to start draining your fluid, okay? Now look upon me. Again, in your blood, there's a little sugar imbalance in your blood. Hmm? Diabetes. It's coming out of your blood. You have something wrong right there that pains you, and it feels funny in the upper part of your stomach, right there. The funny feeling is your dead pancreas, dead pancreas. Do you understand that? I understand what it means, but I didn't know it. Well, your pancreas would have made the insulin for you had it been alive. You understand that? God's going to give you a new pancreas. Well, speaking of new organs, you need two new kidneys. Two new kidneys also. Would you like that? I sure would. you there, 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 and there. It's going to cease now. Everyone said, praise my God. Ooh, Suffice it to say, your blood pressure is coming down too. It goes four or five points high. It's coming down. Everyone said, yay, Lord. Ooh, now you have wondered if your heart is bad. You've worried about that. You were working not very many days ago and you felt something tight hit you here. You stopped in the midst of your work, laid a hand on your heart, and prayed for yourself. Did you? I sure did. In fact, I heard what you said, and you were praying. You want me to tell you what you prayed? Yes. So, oh, God. God, don't let me have a heart attack. If anything happens to me, what would ever happen to this family? Is that your prayer? You pray those words? Yes, I did. The God of heaven that heard your prayer in secret is rewarding you openly. You're healed. Your heart's healed. Your parents is raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Woo! Sugar come out of her blood. Blood pressure go down five points and it's done. Hey, hey. She's all right. She's just under the spout where the glory is coming out. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory, stand God will touch you. You believe you heal you? Your nerves has been bad. You're getting a new set. Fear has tormented you. Fear has tormented you because you just don't have confidence, self-confidence like you should. Because of people close to you, they keep pushing you down, keep running you down. That's right. They, they have no confidence in you, and it's rubbing off on you. You're going to walk out of here with a barrel of brand new self-confidence tonight. God's going to just dump it in you. Hallelujah. Your nerves are being hit. You have poor circulation in your blood. The blood's too low, moves too slow, and circulates too slow. It's coming up. Your eyes has gotten hazy, and there's nothing wrong with your eyes except your circulation is too bad. That's all. Come out here. You also have something stiff starting in your knees, in your kneecaps. Hmm? Right. There's a three-in-one oil can coming down from heaven right now. We're going to oil both kneecaps. It's done. Thank my God. 
Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank God. You have an occasional cramp strikes you there. Almost like a spastic, gastric cramp. And then there's days that you don't feel it no more. But when you do feel it and it gets bad, you have a worry in the back of your mind concerning cancer, the fear of cancer. Is that right? Yes, it would cause me. And there's some people in your family that died with it. And that has helped to make you fearful of it. God's taken the fear out of your head. There's not going to be no cancer in your body. And there's no cancer here. That's only a gastric attack that you get. You understand? Yes. And you have a tiny lump right there in your throat. And you swallow. Swallow now. You swallowed it. You're healed. Listen up! Hey, Kalimah! And every bit of it be done, and it is done. Everyone said it is done. Oh, glory. I love him. Oh, glory. Yes, Lord, what about you? You want God to heal you? That you have? You're not very old, but you have a smothering tightness hit you in your chest, across your breathing. It's gone. You've been wondering about your heart. Is your heart bad at your age? God is healing your heart, so we'll never know, will we? Hallelujah. You have something that pains you in your feet and the bottoms of your feet and in your lower spine at the same time. And you get it from standing on cement floor. Is that right? You go back to work this week, stand on the cement floor, You'll feel no pain in your feet, and you'll feel no pain in your back. He calls shut up my heart. Shall I stop or pray for it all? You the power, don't you? Look upon me. Your blood pressure moves on you. It goes a little high. It runs in your family. Your eyes are hazy, and have a little blur to them. You're doing some fine work with fine print at times, and you're not being able to see everything. God's healing your eyes. You're bothered right in here with a burning sensation. It affects your bladder. It's a bladder infection and your bladder's dropped. God's bringing it up and clearing the infection from you now. This burning infection is, is specifically a yeast infection. There it goes. I mean, bro, Troy, let it be healed in Jesus' name. Thank God it's done. Right? God heal you too? Yes. Raise your hand. Look upon me. You have a sort of a dry and scratchy sensation gets in your eyes, in the lids of your eyes. Yes. You have granulated lids. That's what that is. Here, they're healed. Christ's name, they're healed. Jesus' name. You have something like these, like Charlie horses or muscle spasms hit you in your back, in your upper back. Between the shoulder blades. They're all gone. Step out here. Square your shoulders and check them. Do they leave? Yeah. Go ahead and cry. It's all right. Stay here. There's more. Hallelujah. You have sinus blockage in your head. It's opening in your nasal. It's clear. Did it open? Yeah. You have had low blood too, but only like two to three points low. You need iron, iron, iron in your blood. Get your strength. Right there you have a spasm, a pain that hits you in the female tract, which is in your womb or your uterus. Yes. It's gone because your blood's healed. Go ahead and praise God. It's done. Everyone said praise you the Lord. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. I love him. You believe this is the way to have church? Did Jesus have church like this every day? Glory to God. Rise. God will touch you, my sister. Aren't you glad you came? Yes. Raise your hand. We're going to pray. God is, first of all, there is a little weakness in your eyes. And we want to pray that God will strengthen your sight. Okay. Once it praise the Lord. Circulation is a little bit needing improved in your body circulation. Poor circulation coming back up. Coming to normal. 
Every one said, Praise you, the Lord. Sometimes you're just a little lightheaded in the top of your head. That little lightheaded dizzy spell shall cease. Glory to God. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Glory. The pains that come to your legs will not return because in poor circulation, which gets into the legs so easily, the circulation is healed. Your legs will support your weight and you'll be able to get around fine. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Ah, uh, yes. Everyone said amen. amen. Glory to God. Thank God. Again, I keep coming back to the circulation. Cross your heart and down this left arm. There's more life and feeling and flow going to come to it. And as much as when you sleep at night, you'll be able to sleep on this side just as well as you do on this side. God is touching a very small thing in your wrist, your right wrist. Now, these are small things you could live without, but you might as well have them. The big thing now for you is spiritual. And it is this. God is going to take you deeper into the spirit, into supernatural things than you've ever been before or you've ever been in a particular church that you once attended. You're going to go farther into the things of God than you've ever done in your life. You want to. Do not be afraid of it. Every day it's your increase. God, I thank you for all our healings and the little healings and the itty bitty things, but God, anoint her and carry her farther into God, into the supernatural realm of the Spirit. As we're getting closer to go to heaven, every one of us, may we be more practiced up every day in the supernatural. Take her farther into God than she's ever been. A death has come to you. God tonight. Everyone said, Praise the Lord, it's done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Rise, God's touching you again tonight. Now God's touched this little sister many times, but every time he does, she gets another dose and another chapter deeper. Hallelujah. Now, God has turned your life around. You are filled with joy when you were so depressed you didn't want to live. You've been so happy and so filled with joy. Yet you have one fear. And the fear is that this joy will suddenly cease. It'll suddenly disappear and you'll be back where you was before. But that will not happen, will it? It's not going to happen because we decree it shall not be. Hasana Mahatre. God, this is not a dream she's living. This is reality. In the name of Jesus, may she go higher and feel the more joy than ever before. And may she lose not one jaw, nor wit, nor part of it whatsoever. In Jesus' name it's done. Hush, I keep on Hallelujah. Oh, carry on in God and shout. Praise Him. Praise Let Him take your tongue and speak with the tongue of men and angels. Oh, glory be to God. I love Him because He first loved me. Stand, God will touch you. You believe you will. Raise up your hand. You do have a little dryness of the throat here. You want to get rid of that? Yes. Let's pull it out here. Got it. Everybody said, I didn't see the string. You should have been looking in the spirit. What's the matter with you? There's another world here tonight than that natural world. We're tired of the natural one. We've been living in it too long as it is. Hallelujah. Well, that's clear. Thank God. And across your back, spine, lower back, something that feels like a straight jacket, like a band right here. Just unbuckle that. Everyone said, there it goes. Pretty heavy straight jacket at that. Say amen. Oh, to God. You do have some sinus stuffing that comes through your head. Yes. Opening. You have dryness in your eyes, in the lids of your eyes. Or circulation lodges in your body. God's healing your circulation. You have had the odd cramp that comes in the lower tract. It shall cease. And there's nothing there, so do not fear it. There's nothing there. Hallelujah. And everyone said, Amen, she's healed. Blood circulation, come up. Oh, listen. You've already unlocked the straight jacket, Lord, and healed her throat. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Dad, stand. Let's pray with you next. 
What's that? Nothing. Well, that's right. If I need your help, I'll call on you. First of all, I want to pray that God will loose your chest and your breathing. Okay? Okay. You need that, don't you? Yeah. You have a respiratory condition. God wants to free it. Secondly, you have some arthritis crawling into your joints of your bones. Yeah. It's going to go. Your dollar here and here. Over here, too. A little worse on this side. Worse side. Hmm? It's opening. Now, your nerves bother you, and you have a nervous disorder. It's like reactions that you can't control. Parts of your body you can't control. The nerves are doing this to you, and we're praying that God will heal your nerves. Everybody said amen. The pounding and the pressure that comes on occasion to your head is nothing but blood pressure, and it's coming down. Now, you've had a little palpitation in your heart like a butterfly. A butterfly. There it goes. Flit, flutter, flit, flutter, flitter, flutter, flit, flutters. Flown away. Speaking of your heart, the last thing you need from God is a real good general overhauling in your soul. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I guess so. Well, then pray this prayer with me. It's the first and most important prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus wash me in the blood. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse my soul. Cleanse my soul. Come in my heart to stay. Come in my heart to stay. You're giving me a new heart today. You're giving me a new heart. And you're living in it too. I'm living in it. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for salvation. I'm your property tonight. I'm your property tonight. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me in the blood. Wash me. In the blood. Put my name in your book. Put my name in your book. Come for me when you come. Come for me when you come. I'm putting on a wedding garment. I'm putting on a wedding garment. I'm going to be the bride of Christ. Going to be the bride of Christ. I'm going to be in this church. I'm going to be in this church. I thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. And the restoration of my soul. Restoration of my soul. Get my mansion ready. Get my mansion ready. I'm headed for glory. Thank you, Dad. And everyone rejoice because the angels are rejoicing tonight over one soul that comes to God. Hallelujah. Oh, boy, I'm on bro, I'm bro, sign. Thank God. Take a deep breath. Well, even though you're breathing a lot better, something new and clean is way down deep inside there now. All right. You notice that? Yes. That's who? Master, I guess. Whose name is? Oh, it has to be Jesus. That's true. Upon the confession of your faith, salvation's come to your house tonight. And all these ears, yes, he did. God on some of these ears, totally and clearly. In the name of Jesus. It's open over here. Bob and Paul. Bob and over here too. Rejoice. Meet me in heaven. God's not only healed you, but he's saved your soul. Thank you. Glory to God. Everyone said, thank God's getting real. Oh, glory be to God. Stand God and touch you, sister. Oh, you believe he will. You too have some nerves that bothers you. No. Yes, because you worry too much. You worry about lost loved ones that are in your family that are so close to you and you think they'll never get saved. Huh? They're going to, and you know how they are? You're going to start praying for them on a consistent basis and stop missing days on end. Every day, if it's not but five minutes, be consistent, okay? God will look at your faithfulness and your consistency and save them accordingly, one by one. Now, your nerves are healed. You also have sinus that comes in your head, gives you sinus headaches. It's gone. You have a drainage that never dries up in your throat. God is drying it up. You have something like a kink in your back. Your back goes out of whack down in the lower half of your back. God is straightening this for you taking it away, making it new. Ever once said amen. Mild infection bothers you by time. It originates out of your blood stream, but as you will feel it in the lower abdomen of the female tract. It's like a burning sensation. This is a yeast infection too. 
and it only comes on occasion, but it's left on this occasion, it's gone. Add something heavy, like a heaviness right here. The left side of your chest, right over your heart. It feels kind of, kind of numb and heavy. God took it off. That is more spiritual than it was physical. It's gone. Hallelujah. God save these people in her home and in her house. And don't let her be the only one that knows what she's talking about when she talks the gospel. Jesus name let it be done and she's healed clear <laughs> everybody said praise God it's done rise God's touching you too you have some stiffness that has started to bone joints in your body that's right arthritis of the first second stage that's right. I almost said first but it's more advanced God is so advanced, he can move that in two seconds. Hallelujah. You have the arthritis in your spine, hip joints, and in your leg. 